Welcome to the next edition of Liquid Options TV. My name is Eric, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at trading SPX credit spreads the same day of expiration using a simple technical analysis technique I've been uh, fine-tuning over the last uh, month or so. Uh, before we get started, though, you need to know that everything you see in this video and on this entire channel, actually, is for informational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, and you should know, as you, if you don't already, that trading options can be risky or is risky and may not be suitable for everyone. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the channel on YouTube so you won't miss the next episode. And before we dive into the charts today, I just want to quickly recap last week's episode um, where we talked about using Bollinger Bands and the RSI for identifying high probability entries for credit spreads. So I'm going to expand on that today with a trade, a couple trades that I actually uh, took today. And uh, you can see right now on the screen, I have the Bollinger Bands. And remember, I have a, I have it set to a period of 10 look back, so 10 bars. And actually, I'm going to switch back to the hourly chart, excuse me. And then the RSI is set to four. Now, I did a few of these trades the other day and wrote an article about it on my site. I'm going to put a link to that description to the article if you want to follow up, kind of a, you know, see another example. But the general idea is that when the market is overbought or oversold, we're looking to sell credit spreads against it with a very short time frame. Now, I've been using same day credit spreads. So I did a few, uh, I did a couple on Monday where SPX has weekly options on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday essentially. And the Friday can get kind of squirrely depending on which week it is, but you know, we'll talk about that later. Today's Wednesday, so we have options expiring today. So what I did in the first, uh, 30 minutes or so of the day uh, when the market gapped up, I actually had drilled down to a smaller time frame because uh, I thought this was going to be a gap and go. We had a uh, we had a strong economic report come out this morning and we had a, uh, let me zoom in here. We had a little bit of a, a, a pop here. So I actually sold an at the money put spread that, and once I rallied, I bought it back, but that's not really the fade that I'm talking about, but I just wanted to share that I did that I did do that one. I didn't get a huge gain off that, but I think I was able to sell the spread for a uh, dollar 20 or something and bought it back for a dollar or something like that. Um, so it was very kind of tight. It was more of an experiment, um, which is momentum there. But the one that I wanted to uh, really kind of share with and expand on, well, that's the daily chart, is on the hourly chart, the very first candle of the day, the first hour, we had an overbought RSI, and the candle closed above the uh, the uh, Bollinger Band, the upper Bollinger Band. And if we zoom out just a little bit, I'm also kind of eyeing this previous resistance of around 29.40. So this is a pretty good level to short against. And I actually did the same thing here not too long ago. And so uh, with that, I sold a a credit spread that was a little bit out of the money. I think I actually sold to 29.40. And within the next hour, I was able to close it, capturing about 30% of the profit. Now, obviously hindsight says, oh, I could have let this thing expire and go worthless, but that's not really the goal here. This is a little bit more on the side of scalping, if you want to call it that, or fading volatility expansion. So we're, we're you know, ex volatility expanded here, the Bollinger Bands expanded. And we're selling that volatility with the idea that it's going to settle down or have a little bit of a, a mean reversion. Um, at the end of the day, you can see that we got overbought on the RSI, but we're not really, you know, outside the band. So volatility didn't expand, although we did kind of fade. The next thing we're going to do is kind of drill down to the 30-minute chart. And I think there's probably going to be a little bit more. I, I think I'm going to end up trading on the 30-minute more just because... The hourly chart gets weird because there's not exactly six hours in the day, and it's um, I kind of like the idea. And, and this is where I take take the per, the trades anyway. You can see the very first candle we closed under the band, but we we were overbought. But I like to wait until the first 30 minutes is over anyway, just because sometimes you'll get you'll get like a hard reversal, or maybe it's even going to push higher. And in this case, we actually pushed higher. And as we were pushing higher, I was able to sell that spread there. Now, now I won't necessarily wait all the way until the, um, you know, the close of the candle. 
Um, sometimes I'll fade it a little bit and, and you know, double entry. I'm going to talk, if you check out the article that I'll put in the description, I talk about kind of a double entry here where you could, you know, sell a spread on the first one and then leg into it or sell another one here. Um, but anyway, these are high probability trades. It is definitely a short term time frame. I'm not looking to hold these overnight. They don't always have to be in the opening candle either. Some of them are, are, are better around noontime. Sometimes you'll get a, a, a nice push into the lunch hour and then you can look to fade the lunch hour. Now, you always want to keep an eye out for uh, Fed announcements at 2 p.m., jobs reports, those type of things. If you know that it's a day, um, there was a jobs report today, actually, or, or payroll or something, and it was very high. So there's initial you know, gap up that, oh, that's so good for the market. And ultimately, the market um, kind of came back in today, didn't it? It closed relatively flat compared to yesterday, so it wasn't really much of a gain. But, you, you know, when you're trading these things, it's best to know when those announcements are because those can actually push the market in either direction. And a lot of times those moves get faded. You can see here we closed and it started to, uh, you know, kind of come back up a little bit. Although, again, I'm not you're not going to be able to sell anything and, and get out at the last part of the day. I'm not trying to do that. And I definitely don't want to hold this overnight. So um, that's all I got for this episode of Liquid Options. Again, check out the description if you want to see that article. I'm going to be uh, working. I started doing the hourly chart, but I'm going to be working on a 30-minute um, price action back test uh, in the next few weeks. It's going to be over on the Quant Research site. That'll be in the description as well if you're interested in joining over there, where basically we're going to kind of calculate if if this condition occurs, and let's do an example here, if uh, the 30-minute candle closes above the Bollinger Band and the RSI is overbought, um, where is price several bars later? And we're going to see the probability of that mean reversion the last uh, few years or so. And since it's a 30-minute chart, so I don't know how much data I'm going to pack into this Excel. Hopefully, it'll be. Hopefully, we'll get five years in there, and we can always you know, break it out into separate sheets. But anyway, that's coming over on the quant site. So hopefully you guys will join me over there if you haven't already. Again, check the description for more details about this strategy and the article, and I'll see you guys at the next episode. Thank you.